Hey everybody and welcome back to Fly Tying Tuesdays. My name is Brady, back with you again. Today we're going to tie the red-headed stepchild. It's a cool pattern by Hogan Brown. It's also known as just the red-headed as well, but a nice little take on a mayfly nymph imitation here. So we'll throw our hook in our vise. I already got my tires glass bead fixated on my hook here. So we're tying this today on the Kona uh, WFN. It's a wet fly nymph hook. This is a size 18. So a great little nymph hook, straight shank, down eye. Pretty standard barb on this guy, uh, but it's got a two X long, sorry, one X long length with a two extra long uh, strength, two extra strength on it. If I could say that right. We're gonna start with our thread. This is a 10 knot Vivas in the red color to match our bead and that'll be the main base color for the pattern today doing sort of an attractor version of this commonly tied in red but you'll see it a lot of times also in browns or in a yellow flavor as well and then we're going to get our tail ready so i'm using just some pheasant tail for the tail very traditional tailing material and I'm going to pick some nice ones. Looks like I got some broken fibers here that we'll get rid of. One of the trends to using natural materials is you end up with a lot of waste. So you want to be picky. Find some with the nice tips there that you can utilize to help keep them nice aligned. Measure them out and tie them right in on top of that hook shank there. Three, four fibers, you can go a little bit bushier if you want with your tail, but similar to a pheasant tail, traditional pheasant tail, it's typically good for this pattern. And then we'll add our next material, so that's a little bit of wire. I am using some Semperfly wire today. This is the 0.2 millimeter, also in a red color to match, so a red on red on red style fly we're tying today and that'll be our ribbing so i like to secure that the full length of the body helps allow me to make a nice smooth taper transition and right on back to where that tail was fixed and then we can walk our thread on up with some nice smooth touching wraps and maybe walk down again one time just to add a very slight, slim profile taper to this. And then we can hang our thread out at the front and half hitch it off to keep it secured. Then we're free to rib it. I'm gonna counter rib our wire with just some open wraps five or six times on forward. And I'll always go right up to that bead and capture it. And we can break that off. This is a great mayfly nymph, really year round you can fish it. I find I pull this one out of my box most times during a BWO hatch. If you do the olive body or even the brown body, it can be a nice natural imitation with a little bit of flash. Or the red is also a great attractor kind of searching pattern. So now I have uh, our backing here. This is just a little bit of the hairline pearlescent tinsel. I'm using the wide size, the largest size. And I'm gonna tie that in right on the back. And it'll be sort of a gas bubble backing material another piece of flare to draw those fish in and then we'll do some peacock curl this will be our thorax very traditional thorax so I like a couple of strands and then I only have to wrap it a couple of times to get the nice illusion that I'm looking for here so we'll tie those in together marry them up make sure they're nicely formed together Tie those in and then we can go ahead and wrap them forward 
and like I said just a couple of times maybe three to where we can capture that with our thread as well and snug down make sure everything's locked in place there before clipping out the extra it's a pretty lightweight pattern so a lot of times you're going to need some split shot or another uh, heavy weighted fly to help get into the zone where those fish might be feeding on these nymphs but it could bring you success in a lot of different areas of the water column too last material we'll add is our crystal flash if you haven't seen this from me before I like to clip off just a little corner of the bag there and then that allows me to come in with my whip finish tool and sort of grab one strand individually without making a big old mess just keeps everything in the package there you get what you need and keeps your bench nice and neat so this guy I'm going to tie in on either side one strand and then we'll fold it backwards and secure it and then we'll trim it to match going about a halfway down the abdomen on these you can see you can always go along and trim them a little shorter thereafter but as far as legs go I like these to be a little bit long because they do go into that sort of attractor attribute of this fly so we'll clip those off and then the last thing we're going to do with this is fold our flash straight on forward right behind the bead we'll capture that with our thread with some locking wraps and trim out that excess material and then give it a whip finish and that's all there is really to the red-headed stepchild again just a nice little attractor pattern in this color but it can be tied in a more natural sort of sense. You can play around with it too and do different color legs if you'd like. Doesn't have to be a red bead necessarily, but that's definitely where the namesake comes from. So just a cool little mayfly attractor bug.